right friends welcome back to current affairs and as usual in the year 2016 we used to have news at a glance as well as questions and answers just now i have bifurcated into why and how as well as facts and figures why and how will have more explanation some of the issues requires more explanation that's why this is designated as why and how and the other one is facts and figures so every weekend most likely on saturday we will upload this and this is the first module of why and how for the year 2017 that is for the first week up to 8th january 2017 and if you look at the first one central government said that foreign contribution regulation act licenses of 222 ngos were cancelled and in this context i would like to tell you few points people are often confused about foreign contribution regulation act foreign exchange management act or fema there is a difference between foreign contribution regulation act as well as this fema and here this foreign contribution regulation act this is monitored by ministry of home affairs very important and this regulation was brought in 1976 subsequently new fcra came into force in 2010 and what exactly this basically this fcra looks at funding to non governmental organizations from foreign land funding to non governmental organizations from foreign land comes under the purview of foreign contribution regulation act this is important and the second one is with the record to there is always a difference of opinion between development and environmental concerns and the government strongly feels that non governmental organizations are funded by foreign countries basically they raise the issues of environmental concerns but the governments have to tread cautiously the path between or governments have to strike a balance between development and environmental concerns and in recent times there is a feeling that government is controlling ngos more under fcra or foreign contribution regulation act right and if you look at the next one this foreign exchange management act of 1999 this is with regard to foreign exchange and this is regulated by reserve bank of india and as i have already discussed this foreign contribution regulation act is controlled by ministry of home affairs so these things please don't forget and with this let us move on to the next issue united nations security council resolution condemned israeli settlements in west bank and east jerusalem this is the topic for news capsule we are going to present it during the january and after 1979 in fact this is the first united nations resolution to condemn the settlement policy of israel that is the one aspect and the most important aspect is united states of america abstained instead of vetoing the resolution as permanent member of the united nations security council it has got veto power previously it used veto power but now it abstained and the decision of barack obama is not supported by president elect donald trump right so we will have news capsule as far as this israel palestine conflict is concerned and please look into this these are the settlements which are being constructed in the occupied areas and if you look at the next one former independent director and former tata motors board member nasli wadia has written to securities and exchange board of india sebi is a capital market regulator and we are talking about nasli wadia and nasli wadia please look into this picture he has written to sebi to probe tata sons purchase of shares 
to probe Tata Sons purchase of shares and here two important aspects. The complaint made by Nasli Wadia is with the record to insider trading. Tata Sons purchased 1.7% of the share capital of Tata Motors knowing the decision of Tata Motors. So, what is meant by insider trading? Insider trading relates to knowing price sensitive information in advance and acting upon to benefit some entities. So, here most important aspect is knowing price sensitive information in advance and this is known as insider trading. So, Nasli Wadia complained to SEBI with regard to insider trading undertaken by Tata Sons in the Cyrus Mystery case. Right? And second important aspect here is American depository receipts. Two words are important here. One is insider trading. We have already discussed about it. Second one is American depository receipts. What is the exact meaning of American depository receipts? American depository receipts are underlying share will be here. I am talking about India. Underlying share, suppose Tata Motors has got shares. Against the underlying shares of Tata Motors, some receipts are issued in America. They are called American depository receipts. And those receipts are traded in the stock exchanges of United States of America. Instead of the Tata Motors shares, the receipts are traded in American stock exchanges and underlying shares are Tata Motors. So, that is the meaning of American depository receipts. The meaning is underlying shares will be there, they belong to some other country, but some receipts are issued in America against underlying shares and they are traded in American stock exchanges instead of actual shares. So, this is the mechanism American depository receipts. Similar word is there global depository receipts. So, these words please do not forget. Here we learned two important aspects. One is insider trading. Second one is American depository receipts. And the crux of the matter is the allegation is Tata Sons purchased shares of Tata Motors knowing very well that some voting will come next day. Right? So, this is all about knowing price sensitive information and acting in advance. If you look at the next issue, ISRO stated that it will launch record 103 satellites using PSLV C37 in February and 100 out of 103 will be from foreign nations and the total payload will be 1350 kg. That means, they are all very very small satellites and 103 satellites put together will have a weight of 1350 kg. And if you look at the next one, Union Cabinet gave post facto approval. Here the word is very important, ex post facto approval. Union Cabinet gave ex post facto approval for a ratification of International Solar Alliance and Two, three important aspects I would like to tell you. International Solar Alliance Secretariat is in Gurgaon and this was conceived by Indian Prime Minister and started along with the French President in Paris on November 30, 2015 when the climate change discussions took place in COP21 summit. And Name the ministry which monitors them in India. This International Solar Alliance is monitored by Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. This is very important. Then this International Solar Alliance is headquartered in Gurugram. That is important. And what is meaning of International Solar Alliance? International Solar Alliance is basically the proposed alliance of countries situated between Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn and either fully or partially situated between 
tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn and please look into this picture franco is holland and our prime minister and this is basically the countries which are situated fully or partially between this tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn and the basic thing is between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn here only sun rays will fall vertically and if you go beyond tropic of cancer at the same time if you go beyond tropic of capricorn sun rays will not fall vertically and this is the group of countries between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn then government promulgated specified bank notes secession and liabilities ordinance after demonetization of rupees 500 as well as rupees 1000 notes its legal validity is over from march 31 2017 accordingly government brought ordinance here two three important aspects i would like to tell you when currency notes are concerned liability lies with reserve bank of india and these are guaranteed by the central government these two things very very important please look into this note here i promise to pay the bearer the sum of so and so money is promised by the reserve bank of india so if someone talks about the liability of currency notes lies with the reserve bank of india that is the one aspect so rbi means it is basically liability and the other important aspect is guarantee is given by the central government here read this this is very important so guaranteed by the central government when you look at currency notes promise is made by reserve bank of india reserve bank of india assumes the liability of notes issue but guarantee is given by the promoter of reserve bank that is central government so this terminology is very very important and if you look at this ordinance this is known as specified bank notes cessation of liabilities ordinance and the penalty will be rupees 10000 or five times the amount of face value of specified bank notes after 31st march 2017 right so basically this ordinance is brought to end the liability of reserve bank of india and at the same time government's guarantee will also end with this right and remaining things i have given here most important aspect is liability lies with reserve bank of india and guarantee lies with central government these two aspects are very very important right friends let us move on to the next one this is with regard to double taxation avoidance agreement recently double taxation avoidance agreement protocols are modified with several countries but the three countries are very very important the three countries mauritius cyprus then now singapore why these are modified because of the reason they are suspected to be conduits for a round tripping our money black money is going to those countries and because of the low falls in the tax system it is going to those countries and it is coming back to our country again that is known as round tripping so our black money going to the countries like mauritius cyprus panama and coming back to our country is known as round tripping to prevent round tripping at the same time to reduce base erosion and profit shifting or beps that is another aspect to look into these aspects this double taxation avoidance agreements protocols are modified and at the same time another important word here is grandfathered investments made before march 31 2017 will be grandfathered what is the meaning of this that means if the investments are made prior to march 31 then if they are sold subsequent to march 31 the new protocol will not be applicable so for the investments made up to march 31 grandfathering clause protects the investments from the new protocol so if someone has made investment in 2016 
but he is selling shares in 2019 then the world protocol will be applicable for the investments made up to march 31 world clauses will be applicable that is the grandfathering of investments right these are important terms when you look at recent economic events that is a base erosion profit shifting round tripping then grandfathering of investments multilateral competent authority agreement common reporting standards automatic exchange of information then gar general anti avoidance rules these are the words basically important in the present day economic events right and we discussed about singapore so please uh, look into this map this is a singapore and one important aspect before going ahead this uh, malacca strait lot of traffic takes place through this uh, malacca strait and the traffic subsequently goes towards south china sea and through south china sea it goes to east asia as well as uh, southeast asia and that's why this trade route is very very important somebody may ask you a question where is malacca strait malacca strait is situated between malaysia and indonesia this is a sumatra island of indonesia so this is situated between malaysia and indonesia this is malacca strait very very important then the prime minister launched a beam beam you can look at it from two perspectives one is the bharat interface for money and the second point is it is named after dr bhimrao ambedkar these two are important aspects and this is developed by national payments corporation of india this is npca and some people feel that npca is promoted by reserve bank of india it is not correct npca is not promoted by reserve bank of india it is promoted by some core promoter banks and npci is behind several aspects one is a rupee card and now this upi then this beam these are all developed by national payments corporation of india which is promoted by core promoter banks and here under this beam each transaction limit is rupees 10000 this is very important and up to rupees 20000 in any 24 hours and another important aspect here i would like to tell you is this works as aggregator for all upi based offerings right basically to evolve a common upi app across all banking systems or you can say across all the banks this is basically with a view to evolve common interface for all upi systems of various banks so beam will act as aggregator for all upi based offerings that is one part and two three important aspects basically it works with mobile number then bank account then four digit pass code so these are three aspects are very important if you look at the beam then let us move on the next one is election commission of india announced dates for assembly elections in five states uttar pradesh uttarakhand punjab manipur and goa and two three important aspects i would like to tell you this election commission this is a constitutional body established on 25th january 1950 it was established on 25th january 1950 which we celebrate 25th january as voters day we celebrate 25th january as voters day because on that day in 1950 election commission was born election commission just like finance commission is constitutional body and there is a limit for the expenses by the candidates what is the limit the limit is 28 lakhs in three big states and 20 lakhs per each candidate in states like goa and manipur this is one important aspect and the article which deals with election commission is article 324 this is another important aspect and let us dig further here five states i have given small maps you can go through them and here phase wise elections if somebody asks you in the question up is going with the seven phase poll manipur two phases remaining three states single phase and assembly seats also please go through it uttar pradesh has got 403 assembly seats 
and Goa has got 40 assembly seats. So, these things are very important and the election expenditure limit for each candidate I have given here, please go through it. Then about the election commission as I have already told you, it is constitutional body and it looks at elections for president, vice president, Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, MLA, MLC. MLC that is member of legislative council is not there in all the states, only around the seven states are having this legislative councils if I am not wrong. And if you look at state election commission, all of you are familiar with the local bodies that means panchayats, municipalities, corporations. So, these elections are conducted by state election commission, but not by election commission. Right. So, these things are important and I have given here constitutional bodies. Please go through this. These are constitutional bodies and one important aspect is GST council. This is constitutional body very important and Aadhaar got a statutory status recent times. So, these are statutory bodies. Statutory bodies means these are created based on an act of parliament and these constitutional bodies are enshrined in the constitution. And these are executive bodies, Niti Aayog, Law Commission, these are examples of executive bodies. Supreme Court stripped BCCI President Anurag Thakur and Secretary Ajay Shirke of their posts. They have violated the instructions given by Supreme Court and Supreme Court stated that they are unfit to continue. And two, three important aspects, BCCI, this is the body registered as a society in Tamil Nadu. At present, the registration is with Tamil Nadu under Societies Registration Act and basically when the body is registered as a society, then it should be for the mutual benefit. All the stakeholders must be benefited, that is the meaning of a cooperative society and there are several irregularities and transparency is not there as noticed by Supreme Court of India. So, subsequently Lotha committee was formed and based on Lotha committee recommendations certain guidelines were given by Supreme Court and important guidelines are maximum age of 70 years, no to ministers or bureaucrats and maximum time period is also stipulated for holding various posts and here working committee will become apex council with independent members. So, these are all important recommendations, but they violated these recommendations. That is why Supreme Court sacked them. By majority judgment of 4-3, uh, Supreme Court constitution bench stated that appeal for votes during elections on the basis of religion, caste, race, community is corrupt practice and it interpreted section 123.3 of the representation of people act basically his it interpreted and now it stated that his includes not only the candidate but also the voter and we discussed in detail about this in newspaper articles discussion if you want to please view them and if you look at the next one for the first time in 2016 Nikkei India manufacturing purchasing managers index this is one important term when you look at the macro economy of any country. Two, three important aspects I would like to tell you this with regard to purchasing managers index. Purchasing managers index means the baseline is 50. If it is more than 50, it indicates expansion. If it is less than 50, it indicates a contraction, right? And Purchasing managers index is measured both for manufacturing as well as services very important and normally manufacturing is monitored quite closely that means it is keenly watched. So, if someone talks about purchasing managers index if it is more than 50 it indicates expansion if it is less than 50 it indicates a contraction these are very important aspects. And here criteria for purchasing managers index, manufacturing purchasing managers index, then services purchasing managers index, I have given various aspects. Basically, it tracks the state of 
private sector companies this is very very important purchasing managers index tracks the expansion or contraction of private sector industry so these things please don't forget and supreme court stated that repromulgation of ordinances is a fraud on the constitution when the parliament is not under session at the central level and when state assemblies are not in session at a state level center as well as the state can promulgate ordinances and they will have the same effect just like passing a bill in the floor of the house and the central government gets this power under article 123 at the same time state governments will get this power under article 213 state governments have got the power under article 213 central government under article 123 and the supreme court stated that repromulgation of ordinances is a fraud on the constitution and it is basically subverting the due legislative process and recently four or five times ordinances are being promulgated that's why supreme court came to the conclusion that the repromulgation of ordinances is a fraud on the constitution and our governance basically involves judiciary executive as well as legislative these three wings have got well defined roles one cannot encroach into the other basically legislative action is the duty of legislative that is you can see it is lok sabha and rajya sabha when you look at parliament and it is the state legislative assemblies when you look at the state governments and that is the duty that means the framing of laws is the duty of legislatures but who issue ordinances ordinances are issued by the executive and that means when ordinances are issued then it indicates that legislative power is usurped by executive that should not happen look into the next one one not fourth indian science congress was inaugurated by the prime minister at tirupati and the theme is science and technology for national development and prime minister spoke about cyber security right and prime minister also stated that india will be in the top 3 nations as far as science and technology is concerned by 2030 and please look into this picture prime minister inaugurating this 104th indian science congress in sri venkateswara university campus tirupati 2016 is one second longer than expected now atomic clocks are adjusted with observed rotation of earth right and here the spinning of the earth on its own axis all of you are familiar with that and here what happens one side is atomic clock atomic clock is most accurate because it follows time based on regular decay of radioactive elements such as cesium so the atomic clocks works on the basic principle of this regular decay of radioactive elements and here earth's rotation this rotation of the earth is influenced by some external factors what are those external factors the external factors are basically gravitational pull of the earth's moon gravitational effects of earth's moon and because of gravitational effects of earth's moon push and pull of the moon on our oceans take place push and pull of the moon on our oceans takes place and because of which the spin is decelerated the spin is slowed down between 1.5 to 2 milliseconds a day on an average and to correct that anomaly basically the clock is adjusted this atomic clocks are adjusted across the world and in india also national physics laboratory their atomic clock is there and that is also adjusted national physics this npl is 
CSIR institution, this is National Physical Laboratory and here also atomic clock was adjusted. And if you look at the last one, India successfully test fired its nuclear capable strategic ballistic missile Agni 4 with a strike range of 4000 kilometers. If someone talks about Agni 4, it is a surface to surface two stage nuclear capable ballistic missile and this is 20 meters long and weighs 17 tons. It can carry warhead of 1 ton over a distance of 4000 kilometers and Agni group of surface to surface missiles I have given here. Please go through this slide and with this let us conclude why and how we discussed several aspects and we hope that you will enjoy this new format and please do join for facts and figures. Have a nice day. Thank you.